Evening COVID cast viewers, we are at episode 43 of COVID cast JA. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we will be discussing another in our technology webinar topics. Today we're not talking about diamond mining, we're going to be talking about even more important mining, data mining to support decisions. This, this evening, just to acknowledge also our sponsors who helped to make this program possible, the JMMB Group and the NCB Group. So welcome, welcome all. Before we go any further though, COVIDcast JA would not have been possible without a lady, Greta Bogues, who was the interim CEO of the private sector organization of Jamaica. A very good friend and mentor of me, of mine, um, and of so, so, so many persons. She is the expert on corporate governance and she has also appeared on COVID cast JA. I am so, so, so saddened to announce her passing. It has been crippling for us at the PSOJ. She is such an important nation builder. Her life has been dedicated to service to the Jamaican people and ensuring that Jamaican businesses, whether in the public or the private sector, are operating with exemplary corporate governance. She has been the champion and the warrior for corporate governance. She has done such significant work that has made such a difference in how our businesses operate. Today, we salute this stalwart. Today, we salute this friend of the private and public sector. Today, we salute the nation builder, Greta Bogues, and we just pray that her soul will rest in peace. Our lives are forever changed for having been in her presence, and we are grateful that we have been able to sit at her feet and learn. So ladies and gentlemen, just permit us to have a few moments of silence as we give thanksgiving for the life of the amazing woman, Greta Bogues. Thank you all very, very, very much. Thank you very much. And I um, I see the notes coming in. Greta will, she will, she really will be missed. Tonight we are going to be talking about data mining to support decisions. We are in our series of technology webinars. Now, if you are saying to yourself, tonight is my first night on COVIDcast, you have had a series and I have missed this series. Where do I get the information? Visit us at smallbusinessportal.com. In addition, we distribute a weekly memo, a weekly memo. So if you've missed our previous memos, please email us at sme at psoj.org or visit us at smallbusinessportal.com so that you can catch up on our past episodes and you can also see our previous memos. But please email us right now at sme at psoj.org. Now, we have been talking about our Let's Go Digital Conference, which is set for, let me hear you all together shouting out, March 5th and 6th of 2021. Just in case you're wondering, April, February done, officially, it just done, which means that next week is the beginning of March. And next week, Friday, we will be online for our free virtual conference, Let's go digital. It cannot be missed. So ensure that you have registered. Thank you very much, Sandra. Ensure that you have registered 
for our conference. Now, on the Friday, which is March 5th, because we know you have put it down in your diary, that's the conference day. That's the day that we will have speakers from um, speak about just about every topic that an MSME needs to know. We're going to be talking about emails, websites, e-commerce, your payment platforms. We are going to be giving you that blueprint for your digital journey. But we don't end there because on Saturday, you will get an opportunity to talk to many of our technology providers. They will be doing presentations. But the best thing is that you will be in a space where you can ask your questions. So this is a cannot miss event. No, <laughs> um, because, you know, it's over two days. And so, you know, we can't just come dry. We have to have some giveaways, but you've got to be present. Now, some of our giveaways include, and I beg you note this so that you ensure you do not miss our event, a gourmet basket from Butcher Block, two nights getaway at the Spa Retreat Boutique Hotel in Negril. I may have to take that one myself. Social media consulting session with Ad Intelligent. Dinner for two at Opa Restaurant. Technology needs assessment from Innovate 10X, a two-day training seminars on data mining and analytics from Incos Academy, lunch for two at the Terra Nova, one brushe, computer bag, leather, a house or office cleaning from Mint Cleaners, a 90-minute consulting session on your e-commerce operations with Jason Scott, Deputy President of Jamaica Computer Society. We also have a U.S. 150 gift certificate from Soho Boutique. So whether or not you are able to do anything live or on Zoom, you shall look fantastic when you cash in your gift certificate from Soho Boutique. So prizes are going to be given away over our two days of conference. We know it takes that when you invest your time, we are giving you, we are giving you what is almost a degree in technology. But we're not taking you to that level that you walk away asking, what have they just talked about? We are breaking it down. We are ensuring that you have all the information that you need for the success of your business. We are ensuring that you are digital, digitized, that your business costs are reduced, that you are improving your engagement with customers and suppliers, that you're creating greater efficiency and improving your workflow, improving your product and service offerings, and increasing your employee skill set for the future. It cannot be missed. So that's March 5th and 6th of 2021. That's next week, Friday and Saturday. Welcome, Nadalia. Welcome, Fitzroy. Ensure that you are registering for our conference next week. Now, this evening, we are going to be talking about the topic of data mining to support your decisions. And I know sometimes when we hear things like data mining, we say to ourselves, you know, how does this affect my small business? I mean, what data do I have to mine? Well, today we have two experts that will be breaking it down for you. We're going to be answering the questions for those who don't understand what is data mining. We're going to be talking about how we use data mining to enhance our business. But don't worry, just in case you thought it was Rochelle that was going to take you through this. We have two experts in the form of Leslie Lee Fook data transformation strategies at Incos Services Limited. Now, Leslie Lee is the leading data transformation strategist and educator in the Caribbean. His career spans over 20 years with experience in analytics, robotic process automation, and artificial intelligence. Typically serving enterprise and government customers he aspires to create a globally competitive region and positively impact every Caribbean life using 
data. Leslie is passionate about data literacy and open data and believes that we will all someday become data citizens. I wonder if we need visa for that. His vision is to tap into the deeply creative nature of our Caribbean people so that we can foster the development of a Caribbean analytics community. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Leslie, data transformation strategist. What's up, on, Rochelle? <laughs> Leslie, you know, I stay away, I know, I stay away from troubling your last name too much. Let's <laughs> assault your last name. So, welcome, Leslie. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you. Great to <laughs> Raquel Seville is CEO of BI Brains Caribbean. Raquel is a citizen of COVID Pass JA. She is no stranger to our to our um or broadcast and in fact she had created such an indelible mark that many of our viewers wanted to hear more from raquel now her business bi brains caribbean is a business intelligence and analytics consulting company that has over 10 years of experience working with fortune 500 companies solving business problems with data raquel loves working with data uncovering new insights and finding the unknown excites her. She's been working with massive volumes of structured and unstructured data for over a decade in fast-paced, complex, and demanding international telecommunications companies. With the harsh reality that 80% of corporate business intelligent projects fail, she is keen on strong data governance, business intelligence, user adoption, and having just the right, not just the right tools, but the right talent. She's an author of Open U1, U15, that right, Raquel, for mobile BI and analytics, available on Amazon. And she also lectures on data management, data mining, and knowledge discovery. What I tell you, so we have the experts tonight. Huh? We have the experts tonight. Welcome, Raquel. Welcome, Leslie. Thanks, Rochelle. Thank Appreciate you, you guys having us. Thank you very much. And welcome to our viewers. I'm seeing you, Kerry. Basil, I see you. Shirt, shirt Don, Dari, I see you. Sandra, welcome. Dr. Collett Smith, welcome. Nadalia, welcome. Fitzroy, Windell, Denise, welcome. I hope you have your notes out and you have our weekly memo. Now, before we even get into all of the exciting things that, that you guys love, because I noticed that both of you are excited about this topic of data mining. Some people may yawn and say, what is this data mining? What am I talking about? So let's just start at the very basic. Leslie, what is data mining? Please, Antax. Yeah, sure. So, so data mining at, the, at, you know, at a very fundamental level is taking your organization's data and, and finding patterns and trends inside there. Basically, finding insights that you've been sitting on that are worth a lot to your organization. So, um, when we talk about data, though, what is data? Raquel, what is data? <laughs> All right. Um, well, thanks for having us, um, Rochelle, and condolences to the PSOJ family as well. Um, so, to quickly answer your question, what is data? data is uh, pretty much it's just raw information that you have not applied any analysis you have not applied any sort of reporting so this is just your basic raw information that may sit it may actually sit in some um you know not automated or digital processes it may actually be information that you have on forms or on, you know, it's paper-based. It could be information that you just have stored around in Excel sheets that we know is quite popular mm -hmm. for some companies. Um, you know, it could just be information that you just have bits and pieces of information that you have not yet connected. As Leslie mentioned before, you have not yet tried to dig through, find any patterns, connect the dots, and have anything meaningful and useful that you can use to support decision-making. Okay, because I know some of our viewers are thinking to themselves, this data that you're talking about is only big of data. But data is any of that information, whether we have it on a little piece of paper, in that Excel spreadsheet, in those big books. Um, so whether or not it exists on a computer system, it still is considered data. 
No, for our, um, many of our viewers are micro, small, and medium enterprises. So when they, when, you know, we, we, with COVID, you know, people are just trying to cut and go through, keep their businesses afloat. And Leslie, mm -hmm. in this time, as, as our businesses are considering data mining and hearing what you're saying about data mining, I think one of the key things is for them to understand why is data mining valuable to any business? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, the concepts of data and data mining aren't new to anybody. I'll give you one of my, my favorite stories. Um, so I was I was in Jamaica. I love doing business in Jamaica. I think in terms of the country, uh, the mindset is just like two, three years ahead of everybody else in the region. Um, so I was, I was prepping for this conference. I was in a back room, um, and there was a cleaner in the back room. So I said, Mom, is it okay if I come? I just want to rehearse a little bit for my presentation. And she's like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to disturb you too much. I'll just do my thing in the corner. So she actually stopped and she was listening to what I was talking about. And after I went through a rehearsal, she was like, you know, I have a, a little company. We do catering on the side. How can I find out more about this data thing? Because it sounds like it, it could help me. So, so even, even at the grassroots level in Jamaica, people understand the need to make better decisions. And, you know, throughout the Caribbean, I see that, right? Mm -hmm. I, see, I see fundamentally really strong creativity everywhere you go in the Caribbean. People need to, right? It's a necessity to do more with less. And that's ultimately the objective for, for using data and data mining in the organizations. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, Leslie. And it, you know, you would have a Jamaican that listens to the presentation and says, this person, why don't I get a quick consultancy from this person? <laughs> <laughs> Raquel, in your experience, are there particular industries that benefit even more from data mining? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, honestly, I think all industries stand to benefit from data mining. It is very difficult to say to you know, pinpoint any um, particular industry, but what um, I think we have seen, and I know Leslie can attest to this as well, is that there are industries that are thought of at the forefront because they mm -hmm. have to be, right? So the telecommunications industry has always been at the forefront with data because you have to, because that is a part of your core competence, right? Um, it's a part of how you determine your products, it's a part of how you segment your customers, it's a part of how you drive your business forward. Likewise, we've seen it as well with banks. So in the in the sort of finance industry, you see that shift. Mm -hmm. um, but as it stands, all sectors, all industries stand to benefit from data, from data mining, from analytics, and it's not tied to any one industry. It's just that there are some mm -hmm. industries where they have no choice. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, Leslie, you're going to make a point? Yeah, if I, if, if I could actually expand on that. Um, I mean, our, our practice at the core is, is large enterprise government. Um, and those are the organizations that typically you think they were regulated industries. So they were forced to keep good records. And, and by default, they had pretty good data. So they were able to, to, to tap into a lot of that data. Now the mm -hmm. biggest challenge that, that that's causing is that these large enterprises are using data. They're using data on us because they're capturing data on us and they're using it on us. And it's creating massive divides in the market. So the, 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 the digital divide is getting bigger and bigger because typically the perception is only large organizations can use data. So it's really important that the SMEs um, start utilizing some of this stuff. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. So in terms of setting up your SME business for data mining, because I know some of our viewers are saying, I hope nobody realizes that much of my data is in a box under my desk. Kept in some nice file folders, but in a box under my desk. Mm -hmm. Or some of us have the, our data in Word, some have it in Excel. How do we actually know, set up our business for data mining? So Raquel, you want to give a start or you want me to go? Um, yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, so I think in terms of setting up your business, I think the first thing that you have to do is just think digital. Right, just like or just like the theme for COVID cast and the theme for everything yeah. is start first with thinking digital. 
So even if you, you know, you're collecting information on your customer, trying to ensure that you have some sort of digital asset for that data. It could be, as I always say, people, you know, sometimes bash Excel, but Excel is used by how many billions of persons in the world, right? Um, so if it is just that you can start just tracking in a spreadsheet or something like that, just ensure it is digital because you cannot, you cannot um, do any form of data mining, any form of analysis on something that you have not digitized, right? Okay. So say that if you're, if for SMEs, and I know sometimes, I mean, even myself, as much as I'm in the data field, I tend to also sort of have maybe receipts or certain things that I have not digitized that I need to do for tax purposes and all of that. So I would just encourage SMEs to firstly think digital, ensure that you have some sort of digital log for your data, whatever type of business it is. It could be that you have a little store. It could be that you know, you're know you trying to um, sell some goods or resell items. It doesn't matter. Ensure that you have the digital aspect of it and you can start off simply by just storing it in Excel, storing it in any sort of free um, you know, spreadsheet software that you may have. It doesn't have to be Excel if you can't afford um, the licenses in that case, whatever it may be, but just start out by thinking that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What would you add to that, Leslie? Yeah, no, com completely agree. It, it doesn't have to be lofty. It doesn't have to be this, you know, very expensive system. Uh, but it, in today's world, you know, I, I would consider the cloud the great equalizer. So if, if I run a 10,000, 50,000 seat organization, I still pay that $9.99 a month for a, a subscription of a software that a solo practitioner could go and subscribe to. So, so cloud is actually making these, you know, these world-class tools available to anyone and everyone. So yes, go digital. It doesn't have to be lofty and it, it doesn't have to break the bank, but it could still be as sophisticated as the best. Okay, thank you. Um, I know a lot of us who pay that $9.99 now we're like, but that makes me, I'm, I'm up there with the big boys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm just, I just want to acknowledge, um, well, Donna says Excel is actually a great data management tool. And Fitzroy says, um, he's asking a question where data mining is concerned. Um, should we be focused on current data or archival data? Uh, so I, I will say... <laughs> yeah, 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 both. both it would absolutely. be both because there's both. so much value right. in, in, in the historical information where you can find patterns and trends. And typically, if you're doing any sort of, Leslie can speak to this, any sort of artificial intelligence, any sort of data mining, you need data. Data is your friend. Mm -hmm. So the more data you have, the better off you are. Yep, okay. Um, and for those of you who are joining us and um, you have just logged on, and I'd also like to welcome our Facebook viewers, not only on our PSOJ Access to Finance page, but our Facebook viewers from on the BI Brains Facebook page. Welcome to the BI Brains <laughs> Massive. Trevor Forrest says, big up, Leslie. What's up, Ryan, Trevor? <laughs> yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me just pause for a moment. We have Leslie Lee Pook, who is data transfer, who is a data transformation strategist in Cost Services Limited, and Raquel Seville, who is CEO of BI Brains Caribbean. Now, we have two experts here tonight. We are suggesting that you take very copious notes because not only are you getting information, but you're going to get a chance to win a giveaway. And I know that make us take better notes when we know we're gonna get a giveaway. So, um, Leslie, what are some of the challenges in getting data mining right? Yeah, so so absolutely. So that's a great question. In terms of the challenges, obviously going digital. So having having digital records to, to analyze is the first thing. Um, but you know, even before we get there, there, there is that that perception that analytics is really difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. And today, the tools are all modernized. And, you know, uh, I just ran a class today. We, we trained about 80 people. And one of the attendees came in and said, look, Leslie, I almost didn't come to the class. I'm so happy I came. Um, and this, this, she had the XYZ problem, right? And that's, you know, when you put XYZ, when you put those formulas, those math up on the board, and we, we flash back to school, and there's a huge barrier to that. So, so people today need to realize you don't need to be necessarily strong in, in math or stats 
um, to be able to, or even computer science to do these things. The tools today are now so easy that anybody could really use it. So it's first adopting that, that, that mindset, but then there is a little bit of a threshold. So you do need to develop those skills um, to be able to be, you know, a data ninja, but it doesn't take that long. <laughs> so, so you can become a data ninja even when you didn't do well in algebra. Raquel, would you, <laughs> would you like to add, to add anything to the point Leslie just made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think everything Leslie said is on point. Um, the I think data is being sort of democratized in a way where it's becoming easily accessible to any and everyone. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of the things that I think I know when I started out um, working in the data field, you know, we had to write code to get a lot of these things. These things are now embedded in a lot of tools. They're embedded in a lot of things that you use, right? Even if you just, for example, have a business account on Instagram, the type of data that you can get, the type of an analytics that you can, even from here, this Facebook page that you guys um, stream from, right? The type of data and insights that you can get, right? These things are already embedded. You don't have to get a software engineer to write code to get that sort of information. So yeah. I think the shift is already happening, right? In terms of, as Leslie pointed out, that analytics a lot of the complexities um you know for the persons who were sort of earlier in the game a lot of those complexities are already embedded in a lot of the tools that you're using and it's very easy it's very intuitive for you it's just for you to take that and sort of build on it mm -hmm. and on top of that there's so many free resources online there's so many free courses um that you can sign up for whether it is from any of the MOOCs that you have right whether it is edx or udemy or any of those you can just sign up and do a course if it is that you know you want to get a little bit more expertise or experience in the field okay thank you for that raquel and um just i'm going to donovan wignall welcome um donovan will wignall actually asks, what are some of the out of the box tools i can use to data mine and i'll just tell Don donovan is one of our leading smes and also president of one of small business association of jamaica thank you very much for joining us donovan um can can we get some ideas of what are some of the out of the box tools we can use for data mining yeah, well there is one tool that everybody has um, Excel. So lots of people still use Excel for data mining. I, not one that I recommend. Um, you know, I, I'm a zero out of 10 in Excel. Um, <laughs> there's one tool in particular that I love. Raquel knows what that tool is. Um, <laughs> it's something called Tableau. I'm also a Microsoft partner. There's stuff like Power BI. Um, so there, there are a whole host of tools out there. My recommendation is, you know, go Google it. Um, the top three tools ultimately are, are Tableau, Microsoft, and, and Click. Um, mm -hmm. Download it, try it, see if it works for you. Because different tools, you know, people's brains work a little differently. See what works best for you. All right. And just um, for our, our viewers joining us, the episode that we broadcasted last week, we looked at training for, you know, online training for MSMEs. And we had an entire section that provides you with some of the top training that's available on YouTube. And data mining is one of the things that's available in that listing. No, I see, uh, I have a very interesting question here because this is something I wonder about all the time. You know, sometimes when people plan to go to church, they're saying to themselves, but my life needs to be cleaned up before I head off to church. And the pastor will say, you know, you don't have to clean up your life. Come, come, come with it as is. Is data mining the same way? When I want to get my business in sorted out with data, um, does it have to be all completely clean and together? Um, I may have some errors and gaps. Do I need to clean it up first before I even start considering these data tools? Where do I begin? Hmm. Raquel? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. It's actually funny the way you, <laughs> you um, sort of tied it in there. Um, so typically working with data, we know that data is imperfect, right? Uh, there's no perfect data set. The only perfect data set you tend to have is when you're doing training for, for any sort of software. Outside of that, um, real world data is messy. There are errors, there are inconsistencies. Um, so the recommendation is to actually clean the data as best as you can before you start to do any sort of data mining. And anybody who is in IT, you know, the garbage in, garbage out, the gigo, Right, so you want to do some amount of data um, cleansing as best as you can, but that should not stop you from doing your analysis or from doing any sort of data mining. 
right? Because it is also in data mining that you scope that you also discover that you, you have inconsistencies and issues in your data, right? Okay. But the recommendation would be to clean as best as possible, have some consistent things. I can know sometimes we have inconsistencies with address, with the way we write our parishes, we have sort mm -hmm. of shorthand sort of things, right? All of these different so simple things like those and those things you can actually get in front of, right? You can fix those things from the front end with the software that you're using, ensure that you use like a drop down. Um, so if you, if you, for example, you're selling something online and you have somebody to select the parish that they're in or the country that they're in, just use standard things. Don't let them freehand text those things because then you're going, to, you're going to get all sorts of inconsistencies and errors. So you, what you're doing when you're working with data is you need to think about the the end game, right? You need to think about how it is that you're going to present this in the future. And that is, and that will help you in terms of how you present the tools that you're using and the software and all of that information. Okay. Thank and you. My, yeah, my, my approach actually um, yeah. is, is a little different. I do I do subscribe to the rubbish in, rubbish out. But I, I think um, when you have quality issues with data, I mean, the tools that, that are given today, as soon as you jump into your data, those quality issues just they jump out at you. They start singing, and you could you could discount them and just move on. So so the, you know you don't need to spend a whole heap of time cleaning the data and then get into a point where okay now I'm going to try and make sense of it. So I usually just jump straight in. The obvious things I just get rid of them immediately. They're really easy to deal with, and then I focus on what's there. Yeah. Um, that that's that's our approach. Yeah. yeah. So there is the approach of jumping in and the approach to of this is where we currently are. Let's fix some of the things like how your name, how your name is 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 inputted, how your parish is inputted. So in the going forward, you have the data in that's more yeah. clean and manageable. I'll tell you. Yeah. Thanks for just reminding me. It's president of the MSME Alliance, and MSME Alliance are actually one of our key partners for our Let's Go Digital conference. Leslie, I interrupted you. Oh, no, no, no. So go, go ahead. OK. Um, now, you know, we can't talk about data mining. I'm going to talk about Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have a few things in my cart. Don't tell Nevada. So Amazon is one of our leading companies in data mining. Um, it's always quite fascinating that um, if I just even slightly think of a product, I'm reminded constantly that I've thought of the product and these are my options. <laughs> um, how have they had such great success with data mining? Who's going to take that question? Because we want to know. Yeah. I, I, I can get started. So in terms of data mining, um, they are extremely sophisticated company. Um, they capture data on every single thing. So you go to their website, you click on something, they have that, we know that. If you hover over something, they capture how long you hover over something. <laughs> they, they sometimes are able to jump into your cookies to see what else you've been looking at outside of Amazon. They capture copious amounts of data, and then they use more sophisticated um, AI, machine learning type systems to predict um, what what you would potentially want. And that's why that those engagements that you have with Amazon are so positive because it's almost like they could read your mind. Because it feels that way. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but the data mining technically allows them to read my mind. Yeah. And in fact, to tell me what I should be thinking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A little scary when you think about it, right? Let me tell you, um, we have actually, we have a poll and the wait my poll isn't coming up properly on my phone yet so one of the things is that i i noticed that our our viewers are very interested in this topic jordash wilson says is there anywhere locally that offers certification in data mining tools yeah so we we run something called the incas academy um i'm, I'm very proud of 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 Incas Academy. You know, I was telling you a little earlier, you don't need to ma have maths and stats and all of these things. Um, I I am widely recognized as one of the thought leaders, Raquel is as well in the region for, for data and analytics. Um, but if you if you look back in my history, nothing about my journey um, led you to think that. Mm -hmm. I dropped out of school um, for A-levels. I got Cox, C-O-X-X. -X. Rochelle, I'm sure you don't even know that you can get an X in A-levels. 
I actually got, I got two. Wow. Right? So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I struggled through school and there's, there's nothing that led me to, you know, a, a career path that put me back into school. Right. But what I realized along the way is what I did in school didn't relate to, to what was happening in my reality. And that's why I really struggled to, to excel in school. So we've launched this, this Incas Academy where we've taken, you know, there are a couple of people involved with it, about, about 50 years of experience and condensed it into these amazing programs that are very relevant that you can walk away in two days with, um, mm -hmm. with actionable insights. Um, the, the typical description out of the workshop is life-changing and eye-opening. Wow. Now, we, we, I've had somebody who, who's attended a program at Wharton. So they did an HR analytics program at Wharton. It was like six weeks long. They spent a lot of money to do it. And she said at the end of the program, there was really one thing that she took away that was relevant to her. And she, she attended our program and she said, Leslie, this program by far is, is, is better than what I did at Wharton. And I, only, I spent two days of my life, not six weeks doing it. And it was a fraction of the cost of the money. Um, wow. But it is as good as or better. So there's tons of stuff all around the region. Um, yeah. Raquel, they're also doing some pretty incredible things, Raquel. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have the Airbrains Academy. <laughs> similar to Incus Academy, and we do we do data storytelling um, workshops and training. Um, we also offer it online as well. A person can go on and do that. So we actually even partnered with um, Leslie and Incus, and they training in Trinidad. Um, we've done training in Barbados. We have training here um, in Jamaica. Of course, with COVID, a lot of stuff that we do now is online. Mm -hmm. so we offer data storytelling training, which is really focused around helping you to pull the date, the story out of your data. All right. So, of course, you have a ton load of data and half the time persons say they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to focus the information that they have. And that training is really around helping you to pull the story and insights out of your data and build that sort of story um, with it. And I actually had a little sort of presentation that I wanted to show um, okay. as it relates to the data storytelling. Uh, methodology and just an example of how we've applied that and I think this would be extremely relevant to MSMEs when they think about this so quickly what I want to do and you guys can let me know if you're seeing my screen your screen yes you guys are seeing Fontana yes okay so perfect okay so this is the annual report for Fontana here and uh, I mean, I think everyone is familiar with annual reports, right? It's a whole lot of, it's a PDF document, a whole lot of information. You tend to have to, you know, maybe after the first couple of pages for some persons, they're like, boy, you know, I really can't go through all of these pages. So we actually started an internal project as a way of giving back to not just to the community, but also just to help Caribbean companies see the value that they can get from their data, even if it is in a format like this. Mm -hmm. Right. So we went through our methodology um, using the Fontana example, which is pretty much pulling a story out of the annual report that is there. We did the same thing for Grace. So the Fontana is actually a sneak peek because we actually have not gone live with it as yet. And we're giving away all of these resources for free. Just letting you guys know that. So this is the Fontana storyboard. So we went through their annual report pulled out a goal for them, pulled out some KPIs, and KPIs mean key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. And we actually built up a black and white wireframe from that storyboard. And I just want to quickly show you guys the end results because I don't want to spend too long going through. But this is an actual dashboard that we built using Fontana's annual report that we did in Power BI. And it is a dynamic dashboard. So if you remember when Leslie spoke about the tools that you can use for data mining, the training that you can get. This is the sort of information. This is a Power BI dashboard, and Power BI is free for anyone to download and use. You only really need to pay money when you're talking about sharing information or collaborating or doing certain advanced things. But anyone can go to Microsoft, download Power BI, use it. If you go on our website, you can get access to these um, that the this same file here that I'm using. You guys can actually get access to it. Right. Um, if you go there, know it. We actually have Grace Kenny was the first company that we launched, and we actually got a big thumbs up from um, Don Webby, the CEO for Grace Kennedy Group, on that one that we did. So this is just a way for us to give back to persons who say, "Boy, you know, 
but I have all of this data, I have all of this information, it's all over the place. How do I pull it together? How do I even present it? How do I make sense of it? And we're just sort of walking through some examples, tangible examples from companies that you know on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, and we're hoping to do the Barbados and train that stock exchange soon. And you guys can actually just get this information for free. You can make it your own. The data set is there. If you go and look at this, you can actually view the data set that supports this dashboard um, that we've built. And you can use it and make it your own and use it for your own business. You can, you can connect your own Excel file to it, anything that you want to do. And we're giving it away for, for free on our website. Well, get out of here, is Raquel. <laughs> so, Raquel, please, because <laughs> you know, I know our viewers are dying to know exactly where they, how they get access. <laughs> um, it, could you just remind us of, of where our viewers would get access? Oh, sure. It's bibrains.com. Um, hopefully, as well, I say Sue is on the chat. Sue, you can post the link directly to download um, the stock charts. We call it a database stock chart um, thing. We really just, honestly, at the end of the day, we want Caribbean companies to win. And I know Leslie agrees because when you did this intro, I think it's the same thing. We just want Caribbean companies to win. We want you guys to be empowered, whether you're small or you're large. And uh, um, I think there was a statistic, Rochelle, I don't know if you can confirm it, but I heard something like there was about 600 companies in Jamaica that, clo um, that closed or something like that um, since COVID. Yes. And when you think about that, I'm pretty sure that most of those are small businesses because I haven't heard any of the large enterprises that have shut out, right? But these are the small businesses that have closed. And small businesses are hiring maybe one person, two persons, three persons. So if you look at the multiply effect of that, you can see the impact. And I'm sure like what we're all saying right here is that you guys have the tools, you guys have the resources to build your, to build your companies, to make decisions to pull insights, to understand your customers, to see patterns, to see trends. That is what you guys are going to need to push yourself into this era that we're in, into this fourth industrial revolution. You need your data, right? You cannot get around using your data. And I know it's all like I'm preaching, but Leslie also agrees. I'm pretty sure that a big part of what we have to do as data professionals is evangelize, especially when we're in the Caribbean. We have to evangelize to people to help them to understand and we also have to sort of give away things. So somebody's saying, what is the catch? There's no catch. It's all free. It's just that you use it and make it your own. If you have any issues, any queries, you can always come back to us, ask us any questions. We just want you guys to be empowered. Yes, thank you so much. And um, we're also going to be posting, Leslie, if you can remind us, because Leslie is also one of our giveaways that now means a lot more to you that we're giving away at our conference next week is, let's say it is a two day training seminar on data mining and analytics from Incos. So we're actually giving away a data mining and analytics training from Incos. And you know, it is just so important because one of the, one of the big things for us for this conference is showcasing our local providers. That is our providers in this region that there's so much that is available right here. You just need to be informed. And um, I think it was Mikel. I know Mikel, we did, you know, we're Jamaica, we have to ask a question. What what's the catch? You know what's the catch? The catch is that this is part of how you will get on your digital journey. That's the catch. This is how you will also be able to maintain a viable business. That is the catch. And the catch too is that you get to come on to COVID cast and you hear all of this information free. And when you register for Let's Go Digital, there is even more information available next week, March 5th. Can you imagine? So the team set in at a COVID time, you weren't getting anything. Look at all that you're getting. Now, um, I think one of the things, you know, as we're even thinking about data mining and we're opening up our minds to it. And if my producers would let me know, do we have a price? Is it time for a giveaway? Um, just let me just, I, I will ask you an easy question. The first of our viewers that can tell us what data mining is in one or two sentences, not in SF format, what is data mining? So we're looking out for that response. Now, what type of data mining le best lends itself to improving an SME business? Is it 
customer data behavior, operational performance, financial performance, staff performance, what, what, where, where, where do we begin and what is actually most important for MSMEs? Leslie, um, I, I see you answering. We are on mute. Oh, sorry, my, my, my son just walked in, so I muted off. <laughs> um, I, I thought I locked the cupboard, but it didn't work. Out, but <laughs> um, so <laughs> so it, it depends is the answer, right? Um, they, they, there is no hard and fast for SMEs or any, any one organization. Start with the problem that you are having. Now, um, now that being said, the customer is at the center of every digital transformation. So anything that you could do to improve customer experience is really important. Um, you know, everybody's looking for operational efficiency. Anything you could do on that side as well is also super important. But start with the problem. And, and here's what's going to happen. When you start looking at your problem, you start, you know, finding the data that you have around it. And, and you may not have all the data to solve mm -hmm. that problem. But, but for example, we worked with a, um, an insurance company. And we did, you know, just light training with one of the persons there. No formal training, can't code, can't program, those kind of things. But she had a very curious mind. So executives asked her to go, you know, fix this problem in the organization. She gathered the data and she hit a wall. She didn't have the data to solve that problem. But in that process, she stumbled onto a $3 million problem that wow. nobody knew existed in the organization. And that's the beauty of mining. Things, things just start jumping out at you that you never thought about before. Um, so, so that is my own recommendation. Start with your program, but customer operational excellence. Those are two usually good areas to start at. Yes. Raquel, Raquel, you'd like to add? Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I, I always ask customers, what is your pain point? Mm. Right? It was the same thing that Leslie's saying. What is your pain point? Yes. You know, what what are the challenges that you're having? And once you start there, it will lead you, it will lead you in the right direction. Yeah. And sometimes it, as Leslie said, it will uncover a direction that you didn't even realize. All right. It. All right. wow. Um, I'm seeing a lot of answers coming in because our viewers have been paying key attention. Yeah. Key attention. Yeah. I'm going to ask yeah. users to identify who the winner is of that question, what is data mining? I'm letting the producers do it so that they do have to say that is Rochelle. No. <laughs> no, is data mining something that you need to get an external resource? Do you need to outsource it or is it something that you can do for yourself? Yeah. Well, you can actually do data mining on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually pull insights on your own. Um, as we've said before, a lot of the insights um, these days are embedded in a lot of the tools, a lot of the software that you use. Um, so you can actually start on your own. And there are so many free resources, so many free training that you can actually use. Um, I know some persons are not a fan of online training. Um, but and it also depends at what stage you're at, right? Um, so if you're just sort of exploring, trying to figure it out, you don't necessarily want to commit to bringing someone else in, then maybe you could start off just sort of figuring it out on your own, right? Um, so it depends on the stage. Well, if you're having maybe a, a bigger challenge, a bigger issue where you're trying to, um, you know, get some operational efficiencies um, that you mentioned before, or you're trying to, you know, grow your customer base, you're trying to scale your business, then you may want to say, okay, you know, Leslie or Kel, you know, can you guys sort of come in and help me? Or maybe you can come in and train my staff, right? Because mm -hmm. that's also a, a big part of it too, that, you know, you need to empower yourself as well, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a big part, I think, of, of, of what we try to do as data professionals, that yes, it's good that, you know, you can call us and, you know, you can contract us for this project, but a big Part of it as well is for you to have some amount of empowerment and understanding so that you know you can move forward so that you can grow your business because you need to be moving at a certain pace things are changing rapidly mm. right Change, i mean the, the, the industry that we're in right now is not the same that it was two three four years ago there's a lot of disruption yeah so it's three months ago. i think there's a lot of value in um companies being empowered Right. And it may sound like, you know, we're not trying to get businesses from these companies, but I'm just being honest. There's a lot of value in companies being empowered and empowering their staff. And we're very big on that. And I personally am very big on that as well. Yeah. When we, when we first started on our journey, most companies, they wanted to outsource the contractors. 
Um, and, and, and where they move from is, is basically outsourcing it to internal IT, right? The IT guys were the ones that handled the, the reports and the analytics and stuff. And now they just, ex, you know, they just exported it to somebody else. But it's still creating an unhealthy reliance. Now, now data, data literacy is a new computer literacy. So picture, picture a world where every time you had to send a tweet or send an email, you have to ask somebody for help. So why, why do you need to ask somebody to help for help when you need to, need to make a decision about your company? Mm -hmm. You need to empower yourself. Yes. Yep. Thank you for that. Um, I think um, I'm looking here and um, I just want to go through some of our polls. Um, one of the questions we asked, do you use any data analytics visualization tools for your business? And the, 40% of our respondents said yes, and 60% said no. Um, I think we had um, producers, the question, the answer that you put up was the correct, that's the winner, is that our winner, Dexton? The practice of analyzing large databases in order to generate new information. I see Leslie nodding, is that a suitable answer, Leslie? Thumbs up. Yes. Dexton, your winner prize. And Dexton actually is also asking this question. Do we need to have knowledge of pulling reports and query writing to get into using some of the softwares, software that was mentioned? The short answer is no. no. You don't necessarily have to um, have the knowledge of um, writing queries and all of that. Some of these tools are pretty intuitive. And there's a lot of training sometimes that's available online for free if you just want to sort of, you know, get a better understanding of how to navigate um, your way around it. There are some more complex things that you want to do that, you know, we recommend training, right, for you to be able to understand maybe writing queries and pulling um, data from a database or pulling things from whether it's in a database that you have, you know, in the cloud or wherever it is, then that is getting a little bit more complex. But just to start off, just to explore, you know, mm -hmm. you can actually just sort of work your way around these tools that are pretty intuitive. Okay. And I'm also seeing a question. Sandra Palmer. Sandra Palmer is, is one of our viewers who is always with us. Sandra says, is Microsoft Power BI easy for the layman to follow? And I know, Leslie, you mentioned that um, you are one of the distributors for Microsoft. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say no is <laughs> the easy answer. It's not, it's not my go-to tool. Um, it is something that I, I, I can sell. It's, it's not my favorite. It's, it's, if you are really strong at Excel, you'll probably do well at Power BI. Um, I use something else. OK. I'm not so strong with Excel myself. So if I'm a zero to ten, right? I'm a cox, so yeah. My, no, if well, I, I I didn't think I did well in A levels, but if Excel was a subject in A levels, <laughs> <laughs> um, Fitzroy Fitzroy is challenging Dexton as the winner. I love it. I love when my viewers get so involved. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things we, we cannot go through this show and not talk about this concept of big data. I know it was one of the things that was floating around for several years. Since COVID, I don't hear as much about big data. What is it, big data, and should we be caring about it? So, should we okay. should we be caring about it? Care about big data, or should we just kind of focus on the data where we are try to deal with? Is it something that we should be reading about okay. and educating ourselves about? Okay, okay. Well, so the thing with big, as you say, not really hearing the term anymore, and I think it's because um, Gartner, which is the global research body, they sort of moved it off as sort of a hype word. So we don't need to say big data anymore; it's just data, right? Because we understand. We understand that the data that we're working with um, is going to continue to grow. As I said, like we've generated, I think, 80 or 90 percent of the data that we've been using over the last two to three years. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just going to continue to grow. We don't need to qualify it or quantify it. It's just data. Um, so I think that's why you're not necessarily hearing big data anymore. Um, but it is something that we should care about, something that we should think about for companies. Right. And I would say just think about data in general. 
right? Yes. You have to think about the big data because when you hear big data, you think, no, man, I said the NCB and Digicel and those people mm-hmm. and the flows and, you know, um, you know, but, and it doesn't apply to me as a SME. I don't need to care about big data. I just have a couple Excel files around the place and a couple um, forms, but you do need to care about data. You do need to care about how you're collecting information on your customer because another thing as well that is big and I know that Trinidad has, I think you guys have passed an act, the Data Protection Act. We have the Data Protection Act here. So you have to be mindful of how it is that you're sort of, you know, have information on your customers, you know. So I would say that you need to just think about data in its entirety, right? How you're capturing it, how you're storing it, how you're protecting it. Right. And we've seen a number of things that have started to happen over the past um, couple of days or weeks here, especially local in Jamaica. I don't necessarily have to say, but um, I think it's just important for persons to be very mindful of how it is that they're sort of holding information, how they're protecting that information, who can access it and what happens as well. Like even under the Data Protection Act, if a customer comes to you and say, you know, I want you to delete my information. You know, can you do that? Can you remove customers' information without having any sort of trail? You know, I want to be forgotten, whatever it is. So it's just to, I would say, just start thinking about your different touch points, how you're collecting information, and just start to do an assessment of that holistically. Okay. Thanks for that, Raquel. Um, would you add anything to that um, answer, Leslie? No, no, no. On, on, on I mean, the, the first data is data. There's no big data. There's no small data. There's just insights ultimately, and data is just a vehicle to get there, regardless of the size or the quantity or anything about it. It's data. <laughs> At the end, data. data. Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to give away another. I'm going to do another giveaway. Again, I'm going to allow my producers to take the blame for choosing the winner. And it was Leslie that said that that data mining answer was right. And he well, well, let's say, wasn't it dinner for two at JoJo's? So the first and second place can go together. No jerk pork whale. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie had actually mentioned a few um, some software that he um, would recommend that we can use for data mining he in fact he mentioned three can anybody remind us of one of them <laughs> dr Khaled smith um ask if ethics has been discussed um and actually raquel just touched on our data protection um act but um, would you like to add anything in some of the ethical considerations we have to have as business people when we are mining data yeah so but yeah absolutely so so particularly as as our maturity curve goes up so the analytics is, is for me really at the starting point of all this stuff um, and it eventually will lead to um, some ai artificial intelligence machine learning those sort of things and when the machines really start taking over and using historical stuff, there's a lot of things that you need to be concerned about. Uh, one of those big things are, are bias, ultimately. Um, mm-hmm. So, so bias, um, and then you know, just balancing, you know, what what's good with what's right, is is going to be a huge concern in how you use these these these, these insights, if you will. So, lots of considerations for ethics, and it's great that that's where your head is at already. Yes. Yes. Anything you'd like to add to, 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 to that? And um, before we end, to because we have been mentioning artificial intelligence, and um, Leslie, you actually just mentioned machine learning because you will leave here brighter than we came. So for those of us who don't fully understand, we, we, we hear about artificial intelligence and we may be able to use it in a sentence, hopefully correctly. But if you could just give us um, just a, a, a quick, tutorial on what is artificial intelligence really? Is that Alexa? Yeah, Alexa is a a form of, it is absolutely, Alexa is a form of two types of artificial intelligence. So so AI in general is this very, very broad um, categorization of any anything that seem, any types of computer systems that seem to have human intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Alexa uses two types of, of AI. One is, one is machine learning. So it looks at historical stuff 
and then it, it applies maths and stats and it looks at the probability of something happening. So, so it's an attempt to predict events. Right? Oh. Right? If if I if I buy pampers, will I also buy beers? Right? Those kind of things. Stuff that Tesco's been doing for a very, very long time. Um, and the other branch of it is conversational intelligence. So they're actually taking our words, transcribing it, creating language from it, and then using that language to search their very wide database and then coming up with the most predictive response. So it seems like Alexa is almost human, right? Oh, yes. Sometimes she finds she knows a little bit too much. Yeah, but she's always listening to you. That's the problem. <laughs> Um, so, Leslie, before we actually go to you, uh, let me just I know that um, I see DJ Harriet. My producers is DJ Harriet, our winner. It appears so. DJ, congratulations. And I can see our viewers have been paying key, keen, keen attention to our show. So, congratulations. We've had several responses. Congratulations. Um, let me just um, put out this question from Raquel Burgess. Raquel, for a large company looking to warehouse and analyze large data sets across multiple sources, are there any tools you would recommend? Okay, data across multiple sources. Um, okay, so well, it depends. Um, are the sources on premise? Are they in the cloud? Is it a hybrid um, sort of setup that you have? On premise simply <clears throat> means that you have the data physically in a server somewhere, right? Um, like the data centers that um, maybe Digicel, Cable, have, or you with your company just having a physical server. In the cloud, um, as you guys would know, would be like um, Amazon Warehouse Services, um, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, that sort of setting. Um, so it depends if, if it is that you're doing sort of a hybrid approach or if it is that you have the data in one particular um, setting. So there are tons of different tools. Um, you can look at just the leaders in the space, which would be like Microsoft, um, you know, and, and it depends too, because you can use different tools in your stack. In your stack, meaning just like how you sort of stack pancakes, right? So at the bottom, you'd start to have your data and then, you know, that could be Microsoft. Um, when you're analyzing the data, it could also be Microsoft as well. Or you could use a different tool to do that analysis, right? And then when you're going to present that data to persons, like Leslie mentioned, you have Tableau, you have Power BI, you have Click, and all of these tools are sort of at the top part of um, Gartner's Magic Quadrant for, um, for um, 2021, as it is, right? So you can sort of just select any of those um, from you know, what it is that is already out there. So that's what I'd recommend. You can sort of just go with one platform or one vendor right across the stack um, based on how you're setting up your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that, you know, you have a mix and a blend, which is what a lot of persons do. You may have Tableau with Power BI, depends on the use case, depends on the things that you're trying to do on top of a Microsoft infrastructure. And it may be that you have Microsoft, with a server physically at your office, as well as some data being stored in the cloud, maybe some social media analytics or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's it's hard to just say use this or use that because we're also tool agnostic and we work with different um, tools as well. So it's really for you to just sort of do that analysis and figure out what is best for your organization. Okay, thank you very much for that, um, Raquel. Um, I see Elton Phillips says one more prize. So Delton, you are going to need to attend the conference next week for more prizes. But let me see if you actually remember the name of the conference that will be held on March 5th and 6th next week. Please let us see your responses. And that's such a nice, easy question. Can I can I respond, Michelle? Yes, please, Leslie. <laughs> But Leslie, um, I know we have some great prizes, you know, for dinners, etc. Um, mm -hmm. Leslie and um, and I'm I'm seeing actually also that we're um, a prize that's going to be available. Um, two consultant sessions from BI Brains. 
Is that correct, Leslie? Um, is that correct? <laughs> yes. Oh my yes. goodness, people. Are those responses coming in, producers? Please WhatsApp me the responses. <laughs> so as we are wrapping up, I'm just going to have two last words and points from Leslie and Raquel. Um, let's start with you, Leslie. What would you like to leave our viewers with as they are, you know, some persons have introduced the date in my name. Sure, what sure. Um, tips would you like to leave our viewers with? And then Raquel, I'll ask that you answer that same question. Sure. Well, I, I'm just, I'll just roll back to the, the poll that I'm seeing here. And there's a poll about which tools do you have or which tools do you use? And of, of everything that's out there, 83% of people are doing nothing. So wow. if I had to leave you guys with something, it's that the, the worst decision that you could make is, is indecision. Um, so I need, you guys need to get on board, become digital, and, and that's the only way you're going to compete globally. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, that global perspective might not be hitting home yet, but for the, for the folks that, you know, that had stores in the mall, you know, Amazon was eating their lunch. Everybody needs to compete globally, guys, regardless of the size of your business, what industry you're in. You're competing with, with global players, and you don't even know it. So you need to be as good as or better. Okay, thank you for that. Raquel. Yeah. Um, so, well, what to leave um, the viewers with? I would say that... You know, there are sort of three sort of main areas that I tend to see that some SMEs may have when it comes on to maybe digital or um, data or analytics. Um, one thing they may say, you know, that's not relevant to me. Right? That's not relevant to my business. I don't need that for my business. And that's actually not true. Right? Because as I mentioned before, if you even just have a Facebook page or an Instagram page, you have analytics that is already embedded. You don't need to actually do any sort of coding or anything you know, you have the insights that are already there, right? Um, so it is relevant to you. And uh, as Leslie said, and I think you also said this as well, Rochelle, this is how you move into the next stage that we're in. And yes. the sad truth, and I'm just going to be very blunt, is that if you do not, you will not survive. Mm -hmm. right? Just being very blunt. You mm -hmm. have to ensure that you start looking at your data, right? We're in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution, right? We have all of these things, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And not only do we have them, but we have them at a, at a point in time where it's easily accessible for the average person to access them, right? I, I, think that, I don't think that has ever happened before. When you have different revolutions, it tends to be extremely expensive for you to take advantage of what is happening. And we're at a point where you can take advantage of what is happening and it's available to each and every one of us. Right. Google right now is offering certifications in data analysis and all of these different things that you can go online and you can actually just do that right for free. And there are lots of different resources that you can use. So there's no excuse, I think, at this point in time for companies, for SMEs to not get on board and to not be digital and to not ensure that they're pulling insights from their data. You have to. This is how you survive. This is yeah. how you get to the next league because we're not we're not playing, we're not playing the gut feeling game anymore. You know we're not playing the I think we're playing that. Or the yeah we're playing the I know and we're playing the you know this is what it will be, right? That's the game that we're in. That's the game that everyone is playing. And as Leslie said, you may be sitting here in the Caribbean and you might be thinking, ah, oh, this is not relevant to me. You know, Amazon, there's no way Amazon could impact me. Maybe persons were saying that maybe five, six years ago, but you're seeing that, you know, Amazon, Amazon's reach is pretty wide, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's just important for persons to understand that the time is now, you know, let's go digital. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> go digital. And I'm glad you said, let's go digital. Producers, could you please let me know who the winner is of that question that we just asked, what is the name of our conference next week and bo it's let's go digital mishmak you are a winner viewers we have had such an interesting night with our data transformation strategist of inco services limited leslie lee pook 
as well as the CEO and veteran of COVID cast, Raquel Seville, who is CEO of BI Brains Caribbean. Again, big up to all of the Facebook viewers who are watching from BI Brains page. We see you. <laughs> so welcome to you all. Now, if you are wondering where you can get more information about the work that both Raquel and Leslie are doing. Remember, Leslie also does a two-day training seminar on data mining. And this is also being offered as one of our prizes at our conference. So you know that you cannot miss our conference. And both Leslie and Raquel are also speakers at our conference. So we're really looking forward to hearing from them again in this other setting so thank you very very much thank you so much for the in, um, insight and your expertise leslie folk data transformation strategist in cost services limited and raquel seville ceo bi brains caribbean i'm just going to ask my producers to again put up your information in the chat because i know people are clamoring and googling you and instagramming you right now to make sure okay remember to register at smallbusinessportal.com you have not received this week's memo please remember that the information that we talked about is in each of our weekly memos so this information is in our weekly memo so email us at sme at psoj.org and just a reminder to you i think we have a quick here richard to remind you about let's go digital so while our producers keep up when jmb was started when we were in a one office building downtown ocean boulevard right across from bank of jamaica when my mother started this business she knew she wanted to grow to be a, a massive regional entity but it was technology that took us to where we are today even me resisted along the way because i built my fancy spreadsheets and i said but my fancy spreadsheet is scalable but there's no scale to a fancy spreadsheet where you get the scale is in automated databases and that is what we did at jmb we brought in the technology people they got over my resistance and JMB is what it is today as a result of technology. Starting from a micro business, downtown Ocean Boulevard. So let's replicate that right across the board from micro, small and medium enterprises. So come on board, March 5th and 6th, be there. Let's go digital, digital, we want to go digital. Let's get it a digital, let me hear you suffer talk. Thank you very much. So we are going digital next week, March 5th and 6th. It's online. It is free. Register now at smallbusinessportal.org. We're looking forward to having all of you there. This is an event that cannot be missed. We are going to be talking about e-commerce, websites, emails, digital marketing, data mining, social media. Let me tell you, it's chocolate full of information that is vital in your digital journey. One of the things that Raquel said is on this digital journey, just think digital. We have a little mindset change that some of us have to make. And I know that the information that was provided today by Leslie and Raquel, we're seeing some mindset changes already. I just want to acknowledge our partners the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, the Development Bank of Jamaica, John Pro, the Jamaica Computer Society, that is one of our foundation partners, JITSA, MSME Alliance, Small Business Association of Jamaica, JBDC, that's the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, and very importantly, our sponsors, the NCB Group and the JMMB Group. We also have our print sponsors, the Jamaica Observer, and we are looking forward to having you all. So our sponsors have ensured that this conference is free for our MSMEs. So you just need to go to smallbusinessportal.com 
and register right now. So we'll see you again next week, Thursday for COVID Cast JA. So my gosh, you're not going to type this in my face because Friday we are back again for our all day conference and Saturday, Saturday, we will have our virtual booths with our technology providers. You'll be able to be one-on-one -on -one with our technology providers asking your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you again next week because I know you have to jump off quickly to register for Let's Go Digital at Small Business Portal right now. So see you next week for another episode of COVIDcast JA. Hello, everybody. Stop what you're doing right now. The following is a very important message for micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. Set your calendars for March 5th and March 6th, 2021 for the free Let's Go Digital Conference. You heard me right. It's free. Let's Go Digital. Those who are at revenue of about $1 million per year to about $500 million per year, or those who want to learn more about digital transformation, this conference is for you. Set your calendar for March 5th and 6th, 2021 for our Go Digital Virtual Conference. We'll be sharing success stories from companies just like yours that have already gone on this digital journey. You will see solutions from fellow MSMEs that have technical solutions that will empower your business. We are going to break down the technology choices in a simple to understand language and ensure that you walk away from Let's Go Digital with the right technology solutions for your business. We have been working with the Jamaica Technology Digital Alliance and have cast a wide net inviting tech companies to come on board with delivering on this mission. We'll be exploring simple to more comprehensive e-commerce solutions, payment plugins, banking platforms, logistics platforms for warehousing, distribution, and data intelligence. Don't be afraid as we'll walk through each of these things. Let's go digital! The Development Bank of Jamaica, that's DBJ, will be providing grants to MSMEs of $200,000. You've got to be at the Let's Go Digital Conference because we are going digital. So come as an expert or a beginner. We promise it will be worth your while. Register at www.smallbusinessportal.com. Looking forward to seeing you all there. Okay? 